מבקשים הדבר ודשא. Welcome everybody here to the Martin E. Siegel Theatre Center at the Graduate Center CUNY in Midtown Manhattan in New York City. It's a sunny, bright day here in New York, but it's a sad and dark, dark day for the world. Um, we are in day uh, 23 of the uh, illegal uh, military invasion of Ukraine by uh, Russia. Um, war crimes are committed uh, every day, just as theater was bombed, a sacred space where, um, where citizens uh, uh, were, were seeking shelter. So many died. It's uh, shocking and horrific. And um, it is about time, uh, perhaps also for us in the New York uh, and in the U.S. to get a little closer look. We have with us two workers who, uh, of the Ukrainian theater, two uh, representatives who had the time and the space to talk um, and with us is Maria Bruni. She's a Ukrainian actress working in Hello. theater and uh, in cinema. And we have uh, Golenko Maxim Goryevich with us. Uh, Maxim um, yeah. um, is a director who directs all over Kiev. They are both connected to the Wild Theater in Kiev and many, many others. He has directed over 15, 20 places. Both of you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much uh, for coming with us. We also have uh, Elena Slyanko from PS1 21 in Chatham, a Ukrainian a Russian curator who is a part of the New York theater scene here, and uh, she uh, will be help us uh, to translate. First, uh, welcome to Maria and Golenko. How are you guys, and where mm -hmm. are you? What time is it? Uh, I'm in safe now. Thank you a lot uh, uh, for invite. Mm. Thank you. I'm really appreciate because uh, I think it's uh, very important now to talk about it all. So you are in Poland in Gdansk. You got I'm out? No, not in Gdansk. I'm in Poznan. I Poznan? just arrived here. Yeah, from Berlin, and uh, so I'm here. Yeah, I'm in Poland now. Thank you, uh, um, uh, Elena. Can you ask Maxim where he is and what time it is? Максим, скажіть, будь ласка, де ви зараз і um, який час в Одесі? Ну, я зараз в Одесі. Я uh, біля свого театру. Тут деякі з акторів ще залишилися, так що uh, вечір у нас, слава Богу, більш-менш uh, спокійне місто, затишно, поки що, так що... Ну, а завтра ми збираємось вже, мабуть, і працювати. Так що потихеньку... Let's translate, one second. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Maxim is right now in Odessa. It's evening in Odessa. Um, he happens to be near his theater. That's where he is staying. And there are even a few actors also um, still around. And um, um, tomorrow he is hoping to actually start working. Mm -hmm. As far as we know, the Russian army is getting uh, closer to Odessa. How do you feel? How do you feel when the Russian army is getting closer to Odessa? Well, it's scary and thank God that Odessa is more or less military city. нам підфартило на на шляху російська армія стоїть Миколаїв, який захищається зараз іначе це translate. Um it's from one hand yes you know, Frank it's terrifying um uh, the army being nearby but we also want to say how lucky we feel because thanks to tremendous sacrifice of our neighbors um, the town of Nikolaev in particular um, where Ukrainian um, army was um, on the way of the approaching Russian army and they stopped it down they slowed and, and fight, fighting um, and really defending Ukraine was a great deal of sacrifice у нас дуже тут в Одесі круті Противоповітряні сили, і кожен ранок ми починаємо з того, що за кавою знаємо, скільки російських літаків збили. 
No, um, not each, more. Let, let's translate. Each, hmm? each morning in Odessa, we count how many Russian planes were shot down over the Black Sea. And you see everywhere in town um, uh, defenses, the, con the constructed defenses all over town. So, and if I understand right, you will be rehearsing tomorrow. You said there are actors in town. Did I understand right? Ви будете працювати над якоюсь театральною постановкою, так? Завтра. Так, ми поговорили. Мені дуже багато телефонують актори, ті, що залишились. Частина театру жінки, хтось виїхав, дуже багато чоловіків пішло до Збройних Сил, але дехто залишився і люди просять просто, щоб можна було працювати, щоб вони не з'їхали з Угоду. Вони вже не можуть. Це справді, що я маю багато кілів від моїх акторів. Звісно, багато з них залишили країну, звичайно, жінки, які мали діти, але деякі залишили. Багато мен з моїх трупів залишили армію, але деякі люди залишили, і вони запитують мене почати рехерсал, щоб вони don't completely go crazy in the circumstances. What is he rehearsing? What are you working on? Над чим ви працюєте зараз, Максим? Зараз ми будемо, прямо завтра перша репетиція, у нас чітка, ми будемо брати п'єсу Наташи Ворожбит, Саша винесе сміття. Ну, це якраз така історія про, ну, доволі патріотична, про війну. І ми зрозуміли, що це зараз те, що саме потрібно. Завтра ми починаємо читання з Наталія Ворожбіт's плей «Саша тає out the trash». Це спеціально опозитно і топіко для цього моменту. Це пісня про війну, це дуже патріотична. And that's what we are going to be working with with our actors Incredible. tomorrow. Incredible. Yeah, actually a play we read at the Seagull. Natasha uh, was visiting us with the play. We also had her on Seagull talk in the time of Corona. And I remember her saying, um, for us, Corona is like Christmas time. You know, the war had to stop. Uh, we, you know, can stay at home. It's some kind of a more peaceful time. And um, I tried to reach her. I've emailed her three, four times. I haven't heard from her. So um, I don't know what it is. But let's go to uh, Maria. Maria, when was the moment uh, when you said, I have to leave the country? Uh, it was even in the first day of the war um, because I woke up with, uh, uh, we lived with um, uh, our friend, uh, our with Maxim friend, our director from our theater, Natasha Sivanenko, and um, we woke up uh, with um, uh, with this siren, and um, it was um, uh, some kind of bang uh, three times. And uh, after that, uh, we need to just think what we need to do. Uh, we uh, go to shelter in our house, um, begin to uh, take some stuff on it, uh, to think what we need to do to go or to stay. But in the evening, at evening, I decided that we need to go. And I said, Natasha, and I said, my daughter, that we need to go. We sat on my car. Uh, took the luggage and uh, when we uh, go from uh, Kiev uh, on second day it was be uh, it began uh, banks in Kiev and uh, after that we just uh, uh, ran away uh, on villages around around the cities and uh, three days uh, we uh, ran uh, to uh, borderline and after that I broke my car and I left it in Ukraine and after that we uh, went this borderline uh, by foot open air. Uh, I with my daughter nine hours uh, at night and uh, Natasha 15 because I went to hospital to hospital. Polish hospital. Uh, so it was uh, hard and uh, uh, scary process for us because um, 
who's uh, um, someone was in shelters and uh, hear these banks all all day all day and now it's continuing and uh, we are uh, we was uh, we were i'm sorry uh, on this uh, open air borderline with uh, a lot of panic people and it was really scary too so you uh, like marched, like, you walked for nine hours with your daughter after your car broke down. Uh, we, we didn't walk, we just stayed, stayed by foot because uh, a lot of people was very close each, uh, to each other. Incredible. And, um, and what, ha what, what, are, what are your colleagues doing? Did some stay behind? Did some leave? Uh, did some... Like uh, Maxim said, they actually become soldiers. An incredible thing to think that from stage. Is it go... for me? Question. Yes. Oh, yeah. For okay. yeah. What? For what? Me? Yeah. Your uh, colleagues. What uh, were you uh, doing? Do what were you me? rehearsing? Uh, now I'm in a new theater in Poznan because I was uh, in Berlin for a week, and I haven't uh, some kind of job there yet. But um, in Poznan. Um, um, my colleagues uh, proposed me to be like resident in uh, the theater and have some readings on Ukrainian and Polish and some kind of rehearsals maybe. So they're very nice people and very talented theater. So now I'm here and I hope to make some job because without job, it's really totally you, you, you became crazy all day. You just uh, reading this news. And um, now I think we all need a, a job. So I understand why Maxim with my colleagues in Odessa and I'm so want to be there with them, but I'm here. I understand why they uh, began to, to take new, new, uh, new dramaturgy and new, uh, new performance. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Yeah, that is a, a, just a devastating a situation, devastating choices. Whatever one does is wrong. There are no, no wrong thing right to do. Um, I know that my, my colleague, Akata Grenda, who once ran, was also the head of the Polish Cultural Institute here till she was forced out. Um, um, she said, you know, they, they are hosting uh, many of you. So um, how, how does it work? Did you stay in the theater? Did you get distributed in, uh, in uh, apartments? And um, how did you find shelter? Uh, I'm sorry, I, I didn't understand your question as well. Uh, how did I... Uh, how did when I... you arrived, how, how did you get to uh, uh, Poznan and uh, what... Ah. And uh, ah. how did how did they help you? How did the theater? Яке були обставини, як ви знайшли театр в Познані? It was a, just a Facebook, some kind of group theater of theater people in Facebook. Just say so. So digital so I, media. I I I I watch uh, this uh, um, some kind of cast. It was cast. Yeah, it was cast, uh, and they needed a Ukrainian actress for a few readings it's a mm. uh, little project mm. and i um, made uh, my self tape and i uh, gave it uh, sent it uh, him them in theater and uh, they liked me i hope so and they after that they proposed me not only uh, reading but uh, uh, resident residence in the Fantastic. theater yeah. and i really appreciate them yeah, I mean, two, three million people have left the Ukraine. It's this most serious situation since World War II. Also in the time of Corona, nobody knows what also will happen, you know, with soldiers who are bad bucks, who never have been fully vaccinated and people who know even in pandemics and mass movement in wartime is a, is a, a toxic combination. Uh, Maxim, uh, how do you feel that your actors are soldiers now? Максим, як ви відчуваєте, що стільки ваших акторів пішли в армію воювати? Ну, я думаю, що це правильно. Це, це наш борг. Там, коли треба, 
Ну, кого треба буде, ми всі підемо. Так що... I support them fully. That's what, what's needed now, and I support them. But were they trained? Did they were, you, were they in the army before? Are they voluntary fighting? Я вони як добровольці, чи вони колись раніше служили в армії? Ну більше частина, ну це перша черга, це ті, хто вже був в армії. Там артилерісти і інші, да. Most of them used to serve in the army before, so they are, they, they, there was some training. Mm-hmm. Uh, Maxim, what does it mean for you to do theater in wartime? Що для вас означає працювати в театрі, коли йде війна? Ну, ви знаєте, зараз, крім того, що йде війна, я розумію, що Є війна, а є, треба е, щось робити, те, що ти вмієш, і е, щоб, е, щоб була якась користь твоїй країні. І я розумію, що та вистава, яку ми зробимо, ми її будемо зараз, ну, я розумію, що це в бомбосховищі, в підвалах ми будемо робити, але е, ми дуже хочемо її показувати і, і ЗСУ, і волонтерам. І трішки, щоб вона могла трішки підняти дух, я, ну, я розумію, для чого це робити. Firstly, it's important that we all do what we know what, how to do. And for us, it, it, it is theater. It's important to be engaged, it's, it's important to continue working, and it's important to be useful. Um, we think that we can lift the spirits. We look forward to showing the production or the readings to the army officers to be um, um, to be close to the front and and actually continue to present our work to people who who we think will respond. And that's how we. That's also a sign of showing that we are here, we stand for our country, and we are not afraid. Mm -hmm. Um, Will you go with your theater company to the front, if you say, or will the soldiers come to your theater? Ви сказали, що ви можете офіцерам, солдатам армії показувати. Um, ви, ви поїдете на фронт, чи, чи ви будете приглашати армійців uh, в свій театр? Ну, я думаю, що, що ми будемо показувати. Ну, фронт і тут, і тут солдати, і тут армія, і тут... Uh, well, there are a lot of the army is stationed here in Odessa. Um, so, so we think the front is here in our town. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I wanted to tell you can also speak in, U- in Ukraine and yeah. Elena can translate for you. Справа в тому, що це вперше такий випадок, мені здається, коли, ну, може не вперше, але це унікальний випадок в нехорошому смислі цього слова, коли фронту немає. Фронт в тому та й справа, що фронт зараз в наших містах. У нас немає у нас немає взагалі ніякого безпечного місця. Тому you should keep in you should keep in mind that there is no such thing as us and the front. The front is everywhere. The the the, the battlefield is everywhere and and it's that this peculiar circumstances of this war that um the front is in our towns and cities all around. Да, і це правда, в кожному місті люди не знають, чи вони прокинуться чи ні. In each town, Maxim says, people don't know whether they will wake up tomorrow or not. А в деяких місцях люди не знають, на якій вони території. Вони дзвонять друзям, як із Маріуполя, і питають, скажи, скажи мені, ми ще Україна чи вже Росія? And many people, such as um, residents of Mariupol, if they call, they, are, they don't even know what territory they're in. They call their friends asking, are we on the territory of the Russians or are we on the territory still of the Ukraine? Якось так для цього ми це і будемо робити. So that how, that how it goes.
Mm. Do you hear, uh, Maxim? Do you hear from your actors? Do you? How do you stay in contact? Як ви в контакті залишаєте своїми акторами в театрі, Максим? Ну, у нас є телеграм канал, там весь театр, і ми слідкуємо і. Through Telegram canal that our theater maintains, and so we follow each other very closely. Да, і кожен хто де, хто хто в якій країні, хто в Одесі, хто. And people are scattered all over. Some are in Odessa, some are in other towns, and we all follow each other. Some are in different countries. Зараз наш театр по всьому світу. І ми просто In fact my theater is now in fact my theater now is all over the world. Я мене мрія зібрати всіх після нашої перемоги тут. And my dream is to to gather everybody after we after our victory so that everybody is back in Odessa. І я в це дуже вірю. So you said So you said after victory you feel that um, Ukraine will prevail? Ви відчуваєте і вірите, що Україна переможе? А як же? Ну, у нас і по іншому не може бути. There is no other way. There is no other way. Ну, правда на нашій стороні, так що, да, і... The truth is on our side. У цієї нації, у нашій нації немає реально іншого виходу, бо це геноцид нації. Українці не мають іншого виходу. Ну і ми перемагаємо. І ми перемагаємо. Максим, ви директив, я думаю, в більшість міст Україні в Україні. How does it make you feel that they are all bombed and that the Maxim, you worked in many places in Ukraine. How do you now feel that there are so many cities and different places that are bombed now? Ну, як я можу відчувати? Ну, це біль, я знаю всі ці міста, і, наприклад, у Луганську я працював у 2013 році, робив три грошові опери, а у 2014 році до цього міста вже не можна було потрапити. Just to give you an example, I worked in 2013 in Luhansk, and in 2014, that city changed irrevocably. It wasn't even possible to enter the city at that point anymore. У Маріуполі, якого вже нема, ми дуже багато їздили на фестивалі, а Марія взагалі звідти. І я знаю інше місто квітуче і красиво, коли ми приїжджали на цей фестивалі влітку, і мені зараз страшно на це дивитися. Mariupol, the gorgeous town um, of green, um, lush greenery, festivals. We used to travel to Mariupol often. So many festivals I attended. Maria is from Mariupol, and Mariupol no longer exists. А в Києві перша ракета, яка впала, вона впала поруч із нашою сценою, з Довженка центром. The first rocket that fell on Kiev was near the Dovzhenka Center, where I used to work. It's a never-ending horror and pain for me, because I know intimately all of the places and towns and streets which are now under attack. А в Миколаєві у мене мати і театр, в якому я дуже багато працював. Я хапаюсь за слухавку кожного разу, коли я бачу в інтернеті, що там новий обстріл. Останній був за 10 хвилин перед тим, як ми з вами почали спілкуватися. Моя мати є в Миколаєві. And so many other theater colleagues are in Mykolaiv. And just 10 minutes ago, before we started this conversation with you, there was yet another attack and bombing. Each time I grasp my um, phone, in internet, trying to find the news, what happened. So it's for us 24 hours. 
суцільна біль. Ми сидимо над цими картами і дивимося, де прилетіло кожного разу. It's a 24/7 anxiety and deep pain of mm. not knowing. Yeah, it's for us. Uh, we are so far removed, America, in one sense. It, it's a big country, but it's still an island. We are not as affected. Uh, all my friends in Berlin hosting uh, uh, Ukrainian refugees. Uh, Poland, I think, hosts 1.5 million people who came in within two weeks. Um, uh, Maria, uh, uh, Maxim said, you are from Mariupol. Um, tell us a bit, what, what goes through your mind when you think about your city? Uh, Maria, tell us about Yeah, Mariupol. I understand. Yeah, that's good. Uh... <laughs> I just uh, don't know. Say it in concept. Ukrainian. We can translate. Yeah, we can translate. I, I, no, it's a problem not in Ukrainian. Problem because I I can't answer what in my mind. At first time, it was uh, like it's my city. It's my first theater. I walked there. It was first my first father theater, and. Uh, uh, and now it it's like it's like my heart is uh, bent like that and but I, it's not problem about building you know building we can build new building uh, but uh, people people and they trust in uh, some kindness in some peace it's really horrible for me. For me, it's more horrible than buildings. That's all. Yeah. What do you hear from your, your colleagues who, who stayed behind, Maria? Uh, they are in shelters, they are in theaters, they are in their flats. Uh, one of our colleagues in um, uh, young theater in Kiev uh, was died, I think, yesterday. Um, it's scary. And uh, I don't know, in, in Europe, uh, my colleagues are very scary, too, because all of them are in some flats of some friends and they just sit in and uh, became crazy. So I think um, now I have only my profession, just my profession. I haven't my home. I can't to do something in my theater. It's in Odessa. I haven't anything, but I have my profession. So uh, now a lot of my colleagues uh, began to make some Zoom readings of Ukrainian literature. And uh, it's a uh, it's a piece uh, it's a piece of peace. <laughs> it's a it's a good for us now to do something in our profession. Mm -hmm. um, talking about Tita Maxim, d d since you know, as you said, we don't know. We wake up alive tomorrow. Do you feel uh, your life in theater that it was the right thing to do it, to be in the world? Um, I, Frank, sorry. Yeah, it's for him it's the choice to work in theater, yeah. seeing now all the atrocities, some go to war, some chose military. You know, it, it, how does he feel about working in the theater? Maxim, I would take a выбор, that you will be working in the theater with the fact that you can do something else. How do you feel about your choice now? Я, я думаю, що це правильний вибір, що е, це доказами і, і е, коли треба, ми будемо робити щось інше, але я думаю, що так ми доказуємо, що ми нічого не боїмось. І що, е, е, знову я кажу, що ми живі, що ми... Е, Ну, що в цьому театрі панує життя, і що воно буде після того, як ми переможемо. It is how we prove our own vitality, but also the fact that our theater is still there. And so that's, that very much dictated my choice. It's the work 
that we do and I didn't and I felt it was what what we do now is important to do. І я бачу, як це місто оживає, і тут е, дуже просять, як два тижні тут все було зачинено, і е, як відкриваються магазини, кафе, е, як люди, е, коли треба, співають і на вулицях. І, е, ну, And, and I see the difference with the reverse. And just for two weeks, everything was closed. Cafes, there was no street life. Now things are reopening. Um, and people sing on the streets. They perform on the streets. Um, so th this is what life is and proves that we are not afraid. So people perform, uh, they sing a, a song, or they... Um, so tell us a bit, what do people do on the street? Розкажіть, що на вулицях, як співають, на інструментах грають, що трапиться на вулицях? Ну, ви знаєте, коли я бачу, як... Ну, по-перше, коли я бачу, як пів міста збирає... Наприклад, пісок для барикад, а і тут же оперні співаки співають наш гімн, і як люди щасливі підпівають. Я розумію, що це, ну, це дуже дивно, але це людей якось надихає. Я розумію, що це, ну, начебто це звучить смішно, але... Це демонструє, що це що тут є життя і що ми нічого не боїмося. Um, the street life is now that we half of the town, the town residents uh, build barricades, bring uh, whole sandbags, and then you'll, you'd see a group of professional singers and musicians from theaters, from the national opera, even um, singing national item national hymn, national anthem of Ukraine and other um, other music is happening in town and that's how we prove that we are there, we, we, we are not afraid. And that's our way of saying no to fear and um, saying no to death. Ну, і якщо ми будемо робити цю, цю виставу і е, е, показувати, я, як вам сказати, е, я розумію, для чого я це роблю. Я so my work роблю, on the current piece is, is, I understand why I'm doing this. Я у, у себе на Батьківщині, я в своєму театрі, я займаюся справою, яку вмію робити, я вмію надихати в першу чергу так, і я повинен це робити, мені здається, це правильно. I I'm in my own theater, I'm in my homeland, my home country and I'm practicing my craft and that's what I feel I should be doing. Mm -hmm. Maria, we really want to also to thank you for coming on the program. Um, I uh, wrote many mails and made calls, many actors, directors who left uh, Ukraine did not felt they could not speak. Uh, um, they felt they might be uh, accused uh, from fellow artists or fellow Ukrainians and uh, or also um, um, they are so conflicted about it. How, how, how does it feel to be in a relatively safe space, even so you have no work, you have, uh, you know, no money coming in. Uh, so but still it's a safer space. How, how do you deal with that situation? of some of your friends and colleagues and theater artists are there, you are now in Poznan. Uh, it's really crazy situation. It's, uh, it's not good feelings, you know? And uh, so why I'm here in Poznan with theater and I'm not, uh, now I'm not a uh, actress of the theater but uh, I'll be in some rehearsals and some like, uh, art process. And it's important for me to be with uh, my colleagues because uh, it's an uh, international language. 
it's a um, it's a very nice and very uh, understandable people. So uh, so why I here? <laughs> because without my profession, without all of this, uh, I I don't know what I need in this world and how can I help to Ukraine now because I have some volunteers uh, job first days but um, I feel that it's not enough you know and uh, my this feeling of fault um, I, I began to, set, to to do some work some job some volunteer jobs but uh, it's not enough and now I understand I need to be in my profession somehow yeah yeah it's because a, a lot of women uh, do coffee much more better than me <laughs> and uh, do soup for army much more better than me but i can speak i can act and i think it's my war it's my own war and i am soldier on my field in my field mm -hmm. Absolutely. Like Maxim, of course. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> we were uh, both, uh, Elena also was there at a demonstration here in New York in front of the uh, Russian uh, consulate. The New York theater community uh, uh, came together. It was a small but an effective one. And someone said the, uh, the, op the opposite here of war is not just freedom, it's actually creation. So be able to yes. create. Um, um, Maxim. New history. Is this changing you? Is it, uh, or is it reinforcing your work in theater? Or do you feel you you will be do ra things radically different? Maxim, вы відчуваєте, що цей досвід війни змінить то, як ви працюєте? Ну, без сумніву. Ну, а як? Інакше не може бути. Я, я розумію це. No, no question about it. Um, what we are going through now will, um, will change the way I work, absolutely. Ну, no, коли такий досвід прийшов, значить, ну, значить, ми його пройдемо. I also feel that we will come out stronger with this terrible experience. Mm. Tell us a bit about Ukrainian theater. What is uh, so we all do not uh, know enough. Uh, what makes a Ukrainian theater different from, let's say, Polish, Romanian, Russian? What is Uh, Ukrainian theater about. Розкажіть, який український театр? Чим він відрізняється від театру в Польщі, в Румунії, інших країнах? Що особливого в Україні? Good question, oh. thank you. <laughs> Це таке питання. Ну, я не скажу. Ви знаєте, я думаю, що Uh, який український театр, яким, наприклад, ми займалися тут, в Одесі, і, і, ну, і наприклад, я це трішки інші речі, бо все ж таки uh, до цього український театр – це все ж таки постколоніальний трішки театр, uh, такий, uh, скажімо так, uh, віка, uh, століттями, його таким трішки робили, щоб він був такий красиво співучий, безпроблемний. А той театр, яким все-таки от ми займалися. Translate one second. Let's translate. Uh, um, it's you, one feature. It is I would say is that it's been a theater that is post-colonial theater that developed in this hundred years of kind of building a pretty picture without um, problems. And um, that, that, that was for some time the representation of Ukrainian theater. But... And I think that only after 2014, after that, 
що трапилося, з'явився український тарс став більш соціальний, він почав говорити про якісь проблеми, він почав поговорити своїм, намагатися своєю мовою. І для мене, наприклад, після, ну, після першої, скажімо так, війни, це було таке суцільне попередження про те, що, ну, те, що зараз трапляється, воно відчувалося, що рано чи пізніше це трапиться. І yeah, ми um, хотіли про and, це and, говорити. And it's, um, it is since about... 2014 that theater really dived into uh, more problems problem problem focused theater of social political awareness and agenda it became very political it became very aware of what was happening in the world and that first war was really a warning to us 2014 that theater cannot stand on the sidelines Mm-hmm. Що я думаю, що після цього український театр дуже зміниться. Йому буде про що говорити. And I, and I believe that after this experience in war, Ukrainian theater will change. Um, see, will, і, ну, і мені дуже страшно, що те, про, про що, чого ми боялися, і що, про що ми попереджали всі ці роки, і це реально зараз uh, трапляється. And, and, and with us problematizing political situation since 2014, um, in our work, we, we express that premonition of what was to come. And so this is now becoming a reality. So theater was building um, this kind of a warning, was given a warning. And it's what we were um, uh, thinking Um, expressing it's now becoming a reality. Mm-hmm. Але те, що робиться зараз, ми в самих своїх фантазіях не могли уявити собі. Although we couldn't even imagine in our um, in our past even um, experience of work what it's going to happen. Mm-hmm. The reality of it, the horror. A question for both of you, but let's start with Maria. Maria, what is your vision for theater? What do you feel theater is all about? Ukrainian theater, you mean? In general, your work, you know, you In decided general. to work. Why do you do theater? Oh, it's a hard question for me. <laughs> I don't know, because I, um, I'm happy when I do it, maybe. So why? And... Uh, When I don't do it, uh, it's, I'm not happy. <laughs> I think now we need to, to find some maybe more freedom in theater because we had very provocative and very politician theater in Ukraine with Maxim uh, Valenko. And uh, it was our... It was our, our power in it. But now, after all this, uh, really we was like one. <laughs> you, you understand what I mean? Like, как это правиться, про тех, кто передбачают майбутнее. Можете перекласти, допомогти мне? Елена? Скажіть, скажіть знову, будь ласка, тому що я пишу зараз. Я, я сказала, що в свій час ми, були, ми передбачали цю ситуацію, і зараз ми стикнулися з тим, що ми маємо робити в театрі тепер щось нове, тому що ми ту тему, яку ми ну, ту тему, яку ми несли, вичерпано, да. Її вичерпано. Yeah, paradoxically we were anticipating the horrors that were to come. And so we feel like that theme, those themes that topic um is has been has been explored. It's it's been covered. We now have to move to the new ground. We have to now create new theater. І поки що важко сказати, ну, який саме театр ми будемо робити, які саме теми ми будемо піднімати. Мені здається, для цього треба спочатку перемогти. І зараз and, and ми what, якраз... what I think it's a, to answer your question, it's impossible to envision what theater, what that new theater is going to be, what's going to come. Um, it's too early to say that. 
Але я чомусь думаю, що це буде більше чистий театр, очищений театр від російського впливу і від, меншо, і від меншовартості, однозначно. And I feel like it will be the kind of theater that will, will lose its kind of subservience to, to more colonial, excuse me, Marie, if I'm sort of um, explaining a bit more, the more mm -hmm. colonial um, Russian-centric tradition. Mm -hmm. um, it will lose, that grip will be lost, uh, finally, and we will become uh, more ideas. It, it will be more identic, identic. Yeah, it will yeah. be more um, authentic, mm -hmm. authentic, yes. identi full of Ukrainian, um, um, what, expressing who we are rather mm -hmm. than looking back at, um, at previous traditions, mm -hmm. especially the, the Russian yeah. one. Yeah, I think it was also Brecht who said, you know, what do we do when we are in dark times? And he said, we will sing about the dark times. Um, and Maxime, wh wh what is your vision? Why, why do you do theater? What is your, your, um, your motivation to do it? Maxim, tell me about your motivation. Why is theater? Взагалі, таке філософське питання. Чому я їм займаюся? Так. Е, ну, як прийшов, я, я правильно розумію? Чи, чому зараз? Взагалі, що, чому театр, чому не інша професія? І як ви уявляєте, чому важлив театр для вас? Ну, це для мене, для мене так трапило, що це для мене якийсь мегасвіт, в якому я можу робити, ну, це банально відповідь, в якому я можу робити свої світи, і це мова, якою можу розмовляти. І um, for me, it's a way of living in a larger world. It's, um, it's having um, a specific language. Um, that I can um, I can explore the world with and what's around me. І те, що може робити, і маю так, ну, я роблю так, щоб до мене люди прислухались, і це для мене найпекніший і найцікавіший такий інструмент. If I see that people are hearing us, that they, they listen to what we have to say, that's the, the biggest reward of, of my коли, work, of my being, of my mm -hmm. of, uh, meaning of why I do theater. І коли я був підлітком, я це раптом зрозумів. And I, I understood this in my teenage years, and that's how I ended up in this profession. І потім не дергався нікуди, тільки це. And then never really looked back. So, it, 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 tell us a bit about Maxim about your forty productions. Are they plays? Uh, uh, are they? Uh, do you write the work with actors? Do you look towards the Western canon of plays or towards the Eastern? Tell us a little bit about your work and um, what you are known for. А Максим, скажіть трішки, розкажіть про детальніше про свою працю. Які роботи вас цікавить? Чи то була драматургія західна, чи ви саме пишете? Який матеріал ви використовуєте в своїй праці? Ну, ті всі постановки, що ви робили в різних містах. Я розумію. Ну, ви знаєте, я такий всеядний хлопець. І останній рік я дуже багато... Я так трапилось, я займався, це західна драматургія, це у Львові ми ставили трегрошовку і зробили її такий, як постапокаліпсис. У, у, у Києві одна вистава була по Маркесу, і ми придумали таку країну, Воно на, начебто Латинська Америка, а, але, але розумівали Україну, і вона така дуже гостра вийшла. Let's і... translate one second. Yeah. We, I, I'm, uh, generally, I'm omnivorous, but the last couple of years, for instance, um, um, a year ago, I um, staged um, Three Penny Opera in Lviv. Then in Kiev, also about a year 
or so ago we did um, a new production by, based on works of Gabriel Garcia Marquez, where we recreated in this work as if um, the, the kind of imagined uh, country of Latin America, but it, it really was um, Ukraine that we were exploring through this new work and new, new way. The last premiere was Madej, the chef of the operation, and now, десь тиждень нам не вистачило, у нас повинна було в Одесі була, повинна бути прем'єра щось на кшталт флібак. Яка? Я, я не зрозумію. Флібак. флібак. Гідота, да. Огань – це жіноча моновистава. Але, але в останній час я дуже багато приділяю уваги суто українським драматургам. І ми дуже багато працюємо з Лена Лігушонкової. Це дуже крутий драматург український. Вона шеф-драматург в Одесі у нас. Зараз вона в Бидгощі, теж в Польщі. Ми працювали на деяких інших продукціях з a mono, mono spectacle a production was um, based on, and I couldn't catch quite, maybe Maria will help me or type in the chat uh, what the production was. But now uh, it wasn't doing... production, it was uh, a project, a performance uh, uh, that uh, very looks like, uh, uh, very um, looks like a, a serious, British serious fleabag. Fleabag, okay, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes, mm-hmm. yes yeah. but it was a performance. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and now we are moving on to really engaging with Ukrainian uh, playwrights and um, um, one in particular that we are uh, working very closely with, her name is uh, Lena and the last name... Lena Lagushonkova. Lagushonkova, yes, who is based in... in uh, Odessa, no, right? Uh, she she's she's like me. She is in Kiev and in Odessa, but now she is not far from me in Poland in Bidosh. Okay. Mm-hmm. How wonderful. Uh, that... She is uh, with theater too, and uh, mm-hmm. she is okay. She is in safe now. Я думаю, якщо все буде добре, я буду ми будемо співпрацювати. Я буду. Це такий жах, але я думаю, що це дасть поштовх і українській драматургії, і українським драматургам, і в першу чергу я буду займатися їх рефлексіями якісь. And I, and I think it will be important for us to continue to give voice to Ukrainian playwrights and dramaturgs, because this experience we are living through right now will, I'm sure, will give a tremendous push. Uh, to new writing, new ideas, new experiences in theater. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, I think that the world is a little different now to look at Ukraine. And also the international world from outside of Ukraine will look differently on, on what is Ukraine, yeah. what our country is. What our country is, yeah. So we cannot wait to hear what we do. Maybe we can put out a book of new Ukrainian plays post uh, invasion place that will be coming out is a completely different world and we will be in um, um, Maria tell, what are your first memories of theater if you call it Mario Supul uh, what were your happier moments tell us a bit about your first experiences what were you it was Marupol theater rapey do it and uh, it was uh, the smell of the theater and uh, this darkness with soffits and uh, I lost my mm, religion, Christ, 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 my Christ. Christ. Cross, Christianity. Cross, your cross. cross your mm-hmm. Christ. Yeah, I lost it in this stage. And after that, my religion became theater and acting. And uh, it was very interesting for me because um, uh, before theater, all things that I did, was very easy to me. Uh, my mother is painter and I began to paint in, and uh, all uh, says, uh, said to me, oh, you're so talented, it's so good. 
I began to sing and all said, oh, it's so good for you. You're very talented in singing. But when I uh, began act, uh, my first teachers uh, said me, Let's see what you do more. And uh, uh, it was like a little fight for me. And, uh, and it, was, it was very interesting to this psychological of uh, my, um, my characters, what I play. Uh, so it's not, I have a very um, big problem. I uh, very often, I feel like I'm a bore. It's very bore. But in uh, theater, it's not boring for me. It's interesting all second. Every new second, it's very interesting for me. Mm -hmm. Incredible. Yeah, I hope, you know, that, um, that, that life in theater in, in the Ukraine will continue um, for both, re hopefully, in a re renaissance or in a sense of a revolution that not just what was before, but maybe um, also in, um, in uh, new ways. Question to both of you, what do you think, how will this conflict end as theatre artists uh, with your eyes to the ground, uh, maybe um, Maxime, we start with you, will, do you think, uh, what, what do you think, what do your theatre, what do your friends think, what, how will this all end? Uh, Maxime, tell us how your friends in the theatre, you also think how it will end, how it will end. Ну, я не думаю, я впевнений, що це тільки нашою перемогою може закінчитися. Я вже про це казав. I not only think, but I deeply believe and convinced that, that there can only be one, only one way how it ends, that we will overcome. Ми інакше не припускаємо, іншого варіанту не може бути. Єдине, що ми не знаємо, we just don't even we, we just don't even imagine other outcomes as the, the big question is what um, what blood and how what price we are going to pay for for that outcome uh, so how specifically it all ends we we don't know what do you think Maria I think only about one thing that uh, uh, our world uh, became very uh, cynic. And when in one country there are a lot of murders and uh, the people are dying right now, we are talking now and they are dying now. And another country can't uh, close the sky, for example. And now the country is uh, thinking very slowly. And this, that murder, uh, he continued to kill children. I think in, uh, only about this. Um, it's not necessary for me, uh, buildings or cities, uh, for me, uh, necessary uh, lives. And uh, nobody in Europe, nobody, everywhere um, don't feel this safe because how can I be here on Poland on in Germany in New York LA no matter how can I feel uh, my safety if I know that in another country right now killing people and nobody can do anything this is scary for me now Question to both of you: What what can um, New York theater community do? What would help you? Скажите, чим може допомогти Нью-Йоркська община театральний діячі звідси? Ну, в першу чергу. Нашій країні, я думаю, допомогти, і є якісь вимоги, і просто приєднатися до того. Ну, і Америка і так робить, я розумію, немало для цього, але є якісь вимоги, і закрити теж небо, і ще все інше. Ну, 
якось так. А, е, Пок, Макс, поки, він, поки він, ми він, думаємо він, все ж таки більше про країну, да. так. Так, ви знаєте, там був вопрос, як театральні діячі зможуть щось зробити від, від тут, від Нью-Йорку. Ну, коли ми переможемо, ми хотіли б, щоб ви побачили, як які у нас можуть бути чудові вистави, і ви побачили, як, що це за країна і що це за театр. І можете приїхати і подивитися на це, а можете і навпаки пригласити. It's the sense of solidarity from all over, in the, particularly in the United States, was palpable, palpable and incredible help from the government, but specifically as far as theater community in New York and other places, it's more that once this whole nightmare is over, um, the, the way theater workers can help each other is to see each other's work. And we, we would be eager to show what we do in Ukraine. So, so that to answer your question, theater community in New York and, and people who work there would come to see what is happening in Ukraine mm-hmm. to attend plays, to attend festivals. А поки що хай просто збирають, допомагають збирати гроші на ЗСУ, mm-hmm. на нашу армію, це наша but, єдина but надія. But for now the, the philanthropic support has been tremendous in America and um, the sense of solidarity from all over the world and we are deeply grateful. І кожен бронік, кожна каска – це яка на яку збирають гроші, яка приходить, це це чиєсь життя. And then and so the way individual people responded by raising money to to for humanitarian aid and and it's important and for um for to enable Ukraine Ukrainian army to fight to raise resources um one has to remember that each cent and dollar raised it's some and it's a ukrainian life say maria maria what do you think uh, what what would help you what what would make your life different we need to be visible that's all we need to be visible now um uh, so uh, now we are talking about ukraine and it's great i think so mm-hmm. Yeah, it's incredible, and uh, we we need we all need to be aware. We need support. We need to show our solidarity. And there are so many wars going on in the world. Also, the Ukrainian conflict. As Natalia, when we talked to her, the playwright before, she said, "You know, this has been going on since 16. You know, this is a war. We are already in the middle um, of a war." Um, uh, Elena, if I may ask also you, I know you, you have family, I guess, in, in Kiev. What do you hear? How, how is you doing? How is your mother doing? How is that um, for you? Do someone living in an, a way uh, in another country for many decades? Yes, it's, it's true. And suddenly it all became incredibly close um, to me. I've spent um, um, you know, more than half of my life um, living in New York, living not in Ukraine. I left... Um, when at the age of 20 and that's um, I was very really fully immersed in the life here and in theater here in theater in Western Europe and then suddenly this wave and avalanche of horror what is happening in Ukraine um, it, it was um, it, it was I would say um, transformative to how I even feel now it suddenly is all close to home. That horror, the, the thousands of people dying, the incredible pain that people are experiencing. I think if anything, um, people in the arts, there is tremendous, what theater creates is tremendous sense of empathy uh, for the other, for the other place, for the experience of uh, painful experiences and um, the catastrophe that is happening in Ukraine. And, and uh, my mother is in Kiev, she refused to live. And my uncle is in Odessa, he also refused to live and instead is in a stay in port. Um, and, uh, but I think apart from um, family members, it's more the experience of just people overall there. It's, it brings close to home the idea of we do live in the same um, we, we are, whether you're in Poland or in Berlin or you are in New York, we are very much experiencing this horror of war. 
again. Mm -hmm. sure. Incredible. We're coming close to an end. I really would like to thank both of you um, for, for joining the Siegel Talk. It's very courageous, you know, for you to, uh, Maria, to speak up, you know, having left your country, for you, Maxine, to uh, speak uh, with us. Um, and it's a reality what he said. We don't know if we wake up tomorrow. His theater could be bombed overnight, tonight. Nobody knows what will happen. Nobody knows what the outcome is. If his actors won't show up for rehearsals um, in the coming years, it's not because they get commercials or work in film. They might have been killed um, uh, fighting. Um, so the whole idea of what is theater about is existential and it's uh, uh, um, stunning to see the resilience and that theater actually as is a part of, um, of resistance. It always has been. Uh, also in World War I, in World War II, and uh, we are seeing all these um, 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 incredible um, um, work. So you have all our uh, respect and, um, and our thoughts are with you, our hearts are with you, and um, we will try to get the word out and to uh, support, um, to support you. Um, we are having two more talks scheduled on Monday. We have a, a, a Artist based in Berlin, Greece, uh, born in Russia. Uh, it's uh, Julia Strauss, uh, who uh, is organizing grassroots effort. She's a very significant artist, and uh, she will talk to us what it means uh, for her, for someone in some way from the other side, um, someone who also had to leave the country early. Um, then we will hear from Natalia Kaliada from the Belarus Free Theater, uh, who was just in Washington also. You know, she's uh, very much involved in diplomatic uh, missions. So it's truly um, um, uh, a new world we live in. It's a new world order will happen and we will have to see. Uh, it will no longer be capitalism against communism. It will be, you know, a democrat democratic states perhaps against authoritarian states. China or Russia will be, everything will be, newly uh, mixed and, um, and it is stunning that perhaps uh, some say it is also the end of the world power, or the view of Russia as a superpower, what we are experiencing now. And then we are saddened that it's the Ukrainian who are on that front and sacrificing lives and, and interrupting their lives. Uh, it's a little side thing. We at the Siegel Center organized a film festival. We have over 100 films. It was theater artists did work in the time of Corona, mostly at home. They are from over uh, uh, 50 countries. Uh, so it's called the SiegelFilmFestival.org. I don't know if that's for Ukrainian artists, something to look at, but also in the kind of uh, confinement in small spaces, um, in an expression of uh, free speech, artists found uh, ways to communicate, to direct and to do. And um, if we do this again, we really will also, of course, uh, include work from, from the Ukraine. Um, thank you really all um, uh, uh, for being with us. I wanna ask, thank uh, Elena for jumping in at the last moment to be uh, the translator, Agata Grenda and uh, Anna Albinger uh, in Gdansk uh, uh, and in Poznan who helped us uh, to connect to um, all of you and um, the howl round um, that also said, Frank, it's time. Why don't you, we need to do something. And um, we also had these talks in our minds. So thank you for everybody, uh, Tanvi, Andy at the Siegel Center. And I hope to uh, hear uh, uh, and see you uh, again, B Maria and Maxime. And I hope you will come to New York one day. To our Siegel audience listening in, thank you for taking the time. This is important. They do need our support and help, and there needs to be a feeling of solidarity that they know that the Ukraine is on our mind. It is of importance, and, um, and it's, uh, we're living in a global world, and what happens there, in a way, does happen um, also to us. So uh, join us, if you can, Monday um, with uh, Julia Strauss and then with the Free Belarus Theater on Wednesday. And to both of you, um, I don't know what to say. Besides, I wish you all the best. I hope that all your actors uh, come back, Maxime, um, from, from the war, from fighting in uniform. And Maria, that you find work, that you can do what you say, what you love makes you happy, what you chose to do in life. Um, and it's uh, horrific to learn, you know, that that's work is interrupted by, by real war. So um, thank you, all of them. And um, all the best uh, from New York and from the Siegel Center here at the Graduate Center Q. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for inviting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.